Uh, my name is uh, Pastor Christopher Kagra. For those who are listening to me, who are going to watch me or who are watching right now, I'm a pastor here at the Mount of the Lord Church here in Murphy, Massachusetts. So thank you for tuning in. I believe that this day, this Sunday, will be a great Sunday for all of us because the time we call Sunday a rest moment. The moment God wants us to rest from all the things that you have done during the whole week, that rest is not just to go sleep, it's to commit it, set yourself apart for a beautiful spiritual life on Sunday, we call Sabbath. So thank you for taking time so that together we can be rejoicing around the Word of God. So today we are going to speak through the scripture from Romans chapter 12. Everybody know very well from verse 1 to 8. So the title of my message is, If you care, we serve one another. We are called to serve. We have a gift that God has given us. And uh, when we have a gift, the service of the Lord cannot be done only by one person. We call this the body of Christ. When it, the way we serve Jesus, we do it in unity. So truth, Christian, are defined by unity and diversity and purity. That's where we are. Yes, yeah, some women, I feel like... Uh, we are not doing things right. Some moment, uh, things may not work for us well. But we know how to run back to the Lord and cry out for him. So this type of community cross ethnic, politic, social, economic barrier with a supernatural love. You know, the way we serve really as Christians, it's not about just me. It's about all of us. And God make this because when we all come together, there are strength, there are power. We can get more done. That's what God called us to do. So I'm going to read this scripture right away, and uh, we will see what God has for us. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you may be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasant, and perfect will. Verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought but rather think of yourself with a sober judgment in according with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, hallelujah, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belong to all the others. Verse 6, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is Contributing to the need of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. And if it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Heavenly Father, give us the rhema right here. God, your word, this is your word. But you have a way to use this word to meet our need right now where we are. We are people who just need your help every single day. And the way we see it is when you inspire us. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to inspire us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So when you look through this scripture, we will, let's go back from verse 1 to 11. Apostle Paul 
have a, have a way of teaching his audience. So he teaches uh, the, the, the doctrine, and, uh, and, uh, and those doctrines translate into application. So the way he does things, uh, he just like, uh, he wants people to move from the chair. He's a guy who loves to shake people. The knowledge only of the word of God will not do you any good unless you put the word of God in the practice. So you will see over here that the whole chapter from 1 to 11 is all about doctrinal belief, how God wants you to do things, how things make sense according to the God will. So that's why you see in John 13, 17, uh, Jesus himself, he said one thing here, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. <laughs> if you know these things, in other words, what God is saying is that if you know what I gave you, what I have died for you for, what is there for you, if you know them, you are blessed. So now, you see the doctrinal section from verse 1 to 11 plus application section all linked together with the word we call therefore. You will see he always say therefore. The example, Romans 5, 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's verse five, uh, Romans 5, 1. Now, Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And here we now we are in Romans 12. I appeal to you therefore. You see, now what he's doing is I have taught you the whole time. Now is the time for you to put my work in application. He is appealing to, to his audience. Those audience could be uh, Greek, uh, 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 Jew. So this is an audience that he have in Roman at, at, at that moment. So he's appealing to them to do something that's so important. So he do this. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers. Brothers. Yeah, he called them brothers, Jew and Gentile. Born again. Brothers, I appeal to you by the mercy of God. By the mercy of God. Do we know that by the mercy of God, God, he did all. And that we are here as a beneficial of what he has done for us. So if you know the blessing of God, that God already in his world that is available to you, you won't question it. You just be so thankful and enjoy what he already done. So he said, by the mercy of God to present your body as a living sacrifice. So the mercy of God, like I say, all those good things we have because we are in Christ Jesus. What is this in your life that's so difficult you think that God cannot do it? By God's mercy, everything is available. By God's mercy, we can walk like a son of the king, as a daughter of the king. That is not proud. When we are talking about be happy to be part of God's kingdom, it's not a way to say that uh, you have just be proud of who you are. No, it's just a joyful to know that you belong to someone who created the whole world. And make you just sat give you satisfaction of what life is about by his grace, the mercy of God. And Romans 8 35 39 says, Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword? Say, No, 
That's the point. Are you going to tribulation? Are you going to something like a, like a distress? Are you going to something that you think like God doesn't love you? No. God loves you. Don't let those worldly mindset to tell you something otherwise. God's love is eternal. When you love him, you know the benefit is in it by knowing the love of God. He did a lot. I don't want to go through all this thing. How you go to the cross, how he died for our sin, how he just revealed, he said to us, hey guys, know me. If you know me, all my package become yours. God love us. He did things, and Apostle Paul, inspired by the world, by, by the Spirit of God, trying to, to get us understand in a deep level of who we are as a Christian. God work is awesome. Get to know him. Get to know. I'm so excited because I know who my God is. Do you know him? Do you want to know him? Have you looked about where you were a couple years ago? And where you are today? Do you see any change because he's love? Sometimes God is always talking to us. He always want to call you everywhere. He wants he want you just to come. But sometimes we are not prepared for it. Because we are not prepared and our, our, our ear cannot hear what he's saying. Because we are not part of his uh, children to hear the voice of God. But his love is still there. He's speaking to you today. He wants you because you are so important. He was so important. If you can find the truthness of what God is doing in the world, you cannot deny him. Because sometimes ignorance. When you don't know the truth, that's what we all suffer, the consequences of our life. But God has a plan, a better one. So no one, no matter what you are going through right now. We have pandemic right now that is going on in our country. COVID-19, things look like it's not working. Keep up your faith, man. I'm telling you today, keep up your faith. All this will pass away, but his word will never pass away. I just want to encourage you, keep up your faith. God is God. The whole thing is, if you can just give him uh, your life, if you just commit your life unto him, you will see it. You will experience it. Take the step of faith. Yes, it may not sound like it. Because all we are talking about is about that, it's not about feeling. You know, we love to feel things before you do it. I pray over you in the name of Jesus Christ that by God's love and his mercy, that you take that step that may not be ordinary step because his will, his plan in your life, his will will be done in your life. So God is saying, come to him. By his mercy, present. We have a responsibility right now as a body of Christ to do something. To do something, action. Now, you know, we are dealing again. This is, might be tough for you, but our responsibility is so clear. Apostle Paul is, is saying to present. He, another word, he's asking you to take action. He said, present your body as a living sacrifice. You know, the sacrifice we are to make of our body is uh, the whole body. We have to present everything with us. And I was thinking about this. Do you read when the Bible says that uh, you are the temple? He's talking about the whole body. You are the temple of the living God. When you are the temple of the living God, you want to serve Him. It's not half half things. It's not you say you will say, oh, I lock this part of it, and uh, then I want it. No, no, that's not the way. I'm, we are not there. Please listen to me. God wants everything about you. He wants you to give him everything as a living sacrifice because he's bigger than your problem. He's bigger than the problem. It's not that you go through the program to try to find the solution of your problem. 
God that we are talking about is bigger than your problem. And uh, he can fix it when your heart is right. Yes. That's why we, 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 we give everything as a living sacrifice. You know, we, we give all. In, in the Old Testament, when we talk about a, a sacrifice or service, it's the function of a priest in the tabernacle. When the priests go to the tabernacle, what they do is to, to offer the, the, the sacrifice of an animal uh, for the forgiveness of sin, the burnt offering, and so many things. But here we are talking about the New Testament sacrifice unto the Lord. They're talking about you just to come to him with everything. You don't have to be somebody, you know, thinking that you are. You have to be ready for it. No, God wants you the way you are. He wants to work in your life. He wants you to know his love. I know so many of you right now, don't, maybe you will be fired. You don't have a job anymore. Uh, the chaos in the household, God have a, have a plan for you. Please. If you don't know, give us a call. The month of the law. Give us a call here in the middle of We can try to reach out to you so we can talk. It is a people-centered church. We want to care for people. That's why we have a food ministry. We, have, we are actually feeding people more than 150 every single week. We're for people who have donated us a food grocery store. Those people trust us. And we are so happy of doing this because when people get all these things that they need for their, their family, I know it's God who's doing it. We are just a vessel. That's what it is. And if God wants to touch your heart. Please listen to me. Don't be so discouraged. We are talking about a living God who can do amazing things in your life, no matter where you are, no matter, pro no matter how the problem might look like. Keep up. Keep up. So, since we know that we have died with Christ, you know, we die with him, so we present him to the world. He said, you are the light, the salt of the earth, the light of the world. We represent him. That's why when you become the person who gave totally your life as a living sacrifice, you just like Jesus. You are not Jesus, but you just like it. Because that's the way we preach it, the true gospel. It's not head knowledge. The true gospel, the love of God that he wanted to display every single day. So our worship, full service, can only be a spiritual and a biblical sense. You know, when we worship God, we're not worshiping money, the house, all this. We are worshiping a living God. That's why Sunday like this is very important. Yes, we worship God every single day, seven to seven. But when we come together, it's a time to remind ourselves that we need to be together. We need to get our focus straight. We, because during the week, we are being fighting against the age of this world, the God of this world, the demon, all the spirit that we are facing in the workplace everywhere. But when we come Sunday together is to remind ourselves, hey, we are in together. We can win, and we are winner. Amen? So we need to know this, and we need to be transformed. Verse 2 says that do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world. I know that word fashion after this world or this age. There are so many things can just mess you up. I know so many of you just watch TV like, and you don't even watch the news, but all the movies that sometimes, <laughs> I don't want to say this, but well, uh, you know, I, I know my family members, some people, when they watch the terrible movie, they jump as watching, they jump. I said, why you are jumping? So why you are watching this? You know, it's not good. Don't watch it. Because some people cannot watch, but some people just so good at it. And uh, what I'm saying is, whatever you put inside, that's what's going to come out. Especially when you are Christian. We want to have the word of God in our life. So when we start speaking, we want to have the word come out of us. 
not all the terrible things that is not building up your faith or your soul. Build yourself in the word of God. God want to do something for all of us. So the word transform reach far deeper than conformity to the world. Do not be conformed, but be transformed. Like I say in our mission for, for the church, we want to help people say so the transformation will start from inside out. So this transformation is a something we call Christian inward nature. And uh, when your life is changed, uh, you have a Christian inward nature, and we have to see the pattern that follow up that transformation. That's why we know truly that uh, you are being transformed. That's why we don't like too much, personally me, for people to tell me who they are unless I know and, and, and their character, what they are displaying. We, so, we have so many people there, smarter than me, actually. They can memorize this Bible, but when you look up their lifestyle, it's horrible. It's terrible. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want God. That's all it is. It doesn't matter who you are. We need to know God for ourselves. The world system on this age is an evil one. We cannot trust this world. You know, you see people, people are so desperate, like I said earlier. And uh, the, why evil forces work to push order to a breaking point. People don't have anything on their brain. So, God, guys, you get to know God. I'm just, I don't know what to tell you. You need to know God for yourself. God will become a shield against all those spirits out there trying to discourage you every single day that you could make it. God can do great things in your life if you just give him chance. So I'm going to encourage you. Transformation is important. From inside out, as a Christian inward nature. And now the mind. It is a logical reasoning. We talk about the mind, ethical judgment, and moral awareness must be completely changed. You got to change your mind. We renew our mind by the word of God, the Bible said. So this is the point. But sometimes, you know, things might look so difficult, but in Christian life, sometimes you have to set up a little bit of discipline. Because you can't happen just one day. You have to keep repeating the same thing over over, over, over again. Example, prayer in the morning. Read your Bible in the morning. If you're married, do that with your husband or with your wife. That's build a strong relationship. Talk about the future of the ministry, what you God intended for you to do. Talk about things of God constantly. You know, have fun too. Go to vacation. Enjoy life. God, God wants us to have fun, but what I'm saying to you is, if we are trying to feed ourselves in the age of this world, the way we are doing, the culture is conduct us, you won't be productive. You won't be productive. I don't want that for you. You are a new creation. The all things has passed away. Behold, all things has become new. That's the plan for you. That's why I'm calling you, God want to profess, confess this word in your life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. When you know him, when you embrace him, you become a new creation. And the old life that you thought you had before uh, will be gone, completely gone. And the new life has begun in your life. So verse 3. Uh, verse three. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, still Apostle Paul, he's talking, do not think of yourself more highly than you are, but rather think of yourself with a sober judgment. And according to the measure of faith God has given you. Do you know we belong to each other? We all belong to each other. If you want to have a true relationship, don't just want to have a relationship trying to compare yourself with other people. 
So I let them know that, you know, I have my doctor degree, I went to the college. No, that's what, we don't need uh, in the body of Christ. The love, you cannot be compare yourself. If you want to have a true love in the body of Christ, you know, your social uh, education, all these things, put aside. Body of Christ, love each other. The whole thing in the Bible is about love. Folks, it's about love. He doesn't say that you have to have your doctor degree before you start loving. No, Jesus never said that. But education is a good thing. I'm not denying that. But what I'm saying is love has to be cover everything. When we love that, you cannot see yourself hardly than you are. When love is there, you know that love can cover everything. The way you talk, you, cannot, you are not there to judge people. You're not there to let people know that they are, they are not important. No. God has a gift for everyone to build the body of Christ. Each believer is a living part of Christ's body. And each believer has a gift to be used for the building up of the whole body, perfecting the one member of the body, the other members of the body. So God has a plan for us. Let's work together. Let's do something that will make your soul feel like it. I get it now. That's what the Word of God is about. We don't want to be spectators anymore. There is a time to say, God, what you want me to do for you? And start involving. Uh, we are talking about yesterday, my wife and I, we are talking about food ministry, food pantry, actually. We call food pantry. When we started, it's not that we plan, when we have this church, we do not that we plan to have a food pantry. We never thought about food pantry. What happened is we are getting some people in the church and we still have to take care of them. And through prayer, I was asking God, God, how am I going to do this? This is your people. They are so precious. But they don't have anything. And God put in my heart to go to the uh, grocery store. Once I get to the grocery store, and the same day, the door was opened to us. And since then, we've been doing the food ministry. Now, we are reaching out to so many people. And now, I learned something. When you have people-centered mindset, to serve is just like the Jesus. Jesus, when he finds people like that who are sick, he has so much compassion that uh, he, whatever he has that he does, heal all of them. At the Mount of the Lord, that's what we are doing right now. We are feeding so many people on a weekly basis. Keep us in prayer because the work is getting so heavier and we need more volunteers. But we are so happy. You know, we belong to each other. We minister to each other, and, uh, and, 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 and this we do, and we need each other. We cannot do this alone. We have to do it in the unity and the love of the body of Christ. So, how can you get, you, you, you might be sure that you have a, a spiritual gift. Well, this is a good question, but you have to be willing first. When you are willing to do something, God will show you. Because we are talking about wanting to do something for the kingdom of God. It's not about you. You know, by ourselves, we already make a plan to do some, certain things for our life. But when we start thinking about serving God, you have to be honest. You have to have an honest evaluation for who you are and your personality and what God put in your heart to do. That's where you find your, your gift so easily. It's so easy. It was easy for me, but I hope it will be easy for you because it's the deep, deep inside of what you think God is calling you to do. And sometimes you find that so easily. Each Christian must know what his spiritual gifts are and what ministry he is to have in the local church. We all have to do something. We need to do something for the kingdom of God. God wants us to move forward. All we can do is to accept people and accept this gift, accept whatever God gave to us so when we go out, we can display the love of God to so many people who need uh, to know God. 
you know, I was thinking about this. When we have a gift, why do you, God, give you a gift? It's not for yourself. God gives us a gift so we can serve people. So it's not anything you can boast about. If you are a gift of preaching, a gift of doing something, and the church, be humble about it. Otherwise, you start taking credit for yourself. You know? So I think we usually, uh, sometimes in the churches, we can raise the people out like they are, they, they are better than other people. That's not supposed to be that way. Everybody, to this person who doesn't even finish the high school, God have a gift for that person. We have to just to encourage that guy, that boy, that young man, or that, that old man, just to understand that he have a gift, and the point is to find out that gift and start using it for the glory of God. That's what it is. We need to help people. So together, we think we can get the job done. We must be careful of being above-minded, having an attitude of superiority. I don't like that neither. So we have to be able to be humble. God wants us to be humble, sober-minded, uh, and be the person who respects, and not to be proud for who you are or the position that you are holding. Now, faithful cooperation, verse 5, 4 to 5. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we who are many from one body and each member belong to all the, other, the others. It's so wonderful that we all come like this. We are here right now that we are part of the body of Christ. And we all have a role to play. So when I have my role as a part of a bigger picture, you know, I'm part of those things. But my part is very important. Like your part is important, her part is important, his part is important. So we are very important. We have to be able to elevate people in that way to understand that we are all in together. That's why uh, I believe the Apostle Paul just make that so clear, that we are all together. So verse 6 to 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man gift is a prophet's sign, let him use it in proportion of his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the need of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Hallelujah. I love those kind of different kind of a, a, a gift that God gave to the body of Christ. Oh, this is the body of Christ. We, we know we have the gift, ministerial gift. We talked about the pastor and, and the prophet and, and all this to the, to the teachers. Now we have a, a different kind of gift. That's why the body of Christ is so important. We have to love each other and the unity and especially in the purity of life. Purity, unity, then you are in the camp of God. You cannot do unity and your lifestyle tell us something else. God is a holy God, and we have to go to him with the holiness. We may not be the way God wants us to be, but if we can cultivate that, counsel in our heart. When we know that it's not working, what you do? Go to the Lord, ask for forgiveness. Ask God to have. Ask God to wash you again with his blood. That's where we get close to him to live life that God intends for us to live. What does believer do with his gift? To build the church. The church of local church. We all come together. Do whatever you can to build this church. Do whatever we can to help people in our community. Do whatever we can the way God has speak to your heart. We are in together. That's why I'm encouraging you that if you are listening to me and you don't have any church yet trying to visit the Mount of the Lord Church here in Melford, we need you and God needs you most. Because God's plan, probably you will find out if you start working or attending this church, we're going to put you to work, believe me. <laughs> 
We want to serve. I like to serve. And together we can do it. Amen? So we see how those who can prophesy and the service, those who teach, those who have a spirit of exhortation, those just who like to give generously, those who have leadership skill can do that also. Those who have a, a you know, act of mercy with cheerfulness. You know, you see somebody that you are driving, you know that person needs help, just stop and help if you can. You know, God spoke to you, just do it. We have to prove who we are by our action. Time of speaking, 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 not doing anything is gone. It's a time to be in action. I pray God to help us because I want to be in action. I want to be the person that can, can make a part of what God want to do in this community. And we want to be in a place where God wants us so we can help all the young people who just don't know where to go because they are so caught up with the culture that we are in and their minds messed up. Yes, we need those people who can have a gift to minister to the youth, to visit people in a, in a nursing home, to do so many things that I just want, we want to do. But we need your help. We need your help. This we call the church. A spiritual gift is a tool to build wealth. It's not anything to boast about. It's a tool for all of us. Remember, God called you to do something. Why? Because you have a gift on you. Don't let that gift slip on you. But let that gift to be moved forward so God's name be glorified in your action and everything that you do. Are you ready? to put your whole self into the arm of God? Are you ready to put application more than the theory or doctrinal thing that we've been hearing and hearing? Because when you hear, you have to apply. We call that wisdom. When we are being taught about God, about so many things about God, how so beautiful, how so great, he wants you to take that step also, to be the feet of God, the mouth of God, and do the work that if he was here, we'll be doing. That's what we are called to do. That's what this message is about. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about nobody here. It's about all of us. It's about our community. It's about the call that we have for us. We need you. So may God bless you. Please contact us. Please let us know how we can work together. Because by doing that, then you step in in the miracle power of God. That's the way God can touch you. Because you trust him by faith and you believe him. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the inspiration that you gave to us this morning. Help us. God, we need the anointing upon your word. We need to live here and meditate on your word. We need to be prepared for the season, and we need to take action. Only you who can help us to do this. So, mighty God, thank you so much for everyone who are listening, those who are here. May God bless all of us. We give all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody say Amen, amen. Yes, if you are listening to me, if you have not given your life to Christ, I'm going to give you opportunity right now. Because this one is a God set up that way. Somebody has to help somebody. We want to help you because the way to the Lord is the only one way, is through Jesus Christ. So the prayer is just so simple. So when you get that road through Jesus Christ, that's the road that goes to the Lord. And we call that prayer to commit your life to Christ. Can you pray with me? Okay, repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. This morning, I want to confess all my sin unto you. And I want you to wash me in your blood. Cleanse me and forgive me for everything I have done against you. Today, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for the power of salvation in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, for anyone that will repeat this, uh, this prayer, 
I ask you, Lord, for your hand be upon it, that your blood to seal that prayer upon that person, that nothing else can take away this confession that be made. Mighty God, we just want to thank you that you are always walking as we trust you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen.